So in this quick video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an assembly preset that consists of um, mesh ops. Uh, so there are a couple things we want to keep in mind when doing this. Um, first, I'm just going to uh, take my empty mesh item and I'm going to rename it and I'll just call this assembly underscore uh, demo. Uh, the name isn't important. Uh, I'm just going to use this as a test um, item. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the uh, cube so that we have a cube item here. And I'm going to drag my cube into the schematic. Uh, now if you don't see your schematic, just really quickly what you can do is, I'll just drag that off. So your viewport might look like this. Uh, what I'm going to do is come over to the top right corner here of my 3D viewport. And this little arrow, I'll left click on it. And I'm going to choose viewport controls and split vertical. So now I have um, two 3D viewports. And this bottom 3D viewport, I just want to be the schematic. So I'll click on the arrow here at the top right corner of this bottom 3D viewport. And I'll left click on it, and I'll come down to Utility, Schematic. And now I have the schematic here. And this little node is very small. If you press A while it is highlighted, uh, it will zoom in on it, or auto fit uh, that node. So this is the cube. Uh, you can bring, uh, I'll just re remove this really quickly, uh, remove nodes. You can drag any uh, item. Uh, into the schematic from either the 3D viewport, like so. Uh, and similarly, you can do that. Let me just remove this again. Uh, you can do it from the item list. So I can just drag it in here. And also, if I just uh, remove this once again, uh, if I select any item, either in the item list or the 3D viewport, I can click Add Selected, and the node is added to the schematic. OK, so in this empty mesh item, I'm going to select it, and then I'll come over to the Mesh Operation tab. And the Mesh Operations tab is split into two parts. The top part is the item list, and the bottom part is our um, procedural stack section. So I'm going to add an operator that brings up this browser. I'll just start to type in here uh, merge, because we're going to add a merge meshes mesh op. And uh, this merge meshes mesh op, I can either left click and drag it into the schematic here. Um, this is going to look for a source. If I double click this yellow diamond here, it just shows uh, the name of our item. Um, but the source right here is looking for uh, geometry, or it's actually looking for a mesh item. So if I hide my cube item here so that we don't see it in the uh, 3D viewport, I can just select this diamond here for the cube item, which is hidden. But if I click on the diamond and drag it into the sources section, um, the cube appears. Now, this is not the same cube that we originally created. Um, if I actually make that visible, You'll see it kind of overlaps. The, the edges get a little bit darker, so we have overlapping uh, geo right now. Um, but what's actually happening is this original cube is hidden, um, but it's actually being procedurally uh, duplicated using the merge meshes mesh up. So if I hit this little triangle here next to merge meshes, uh, and we look in the source, you can see this cube, which is this cube right here, is the source of this merge meshes mesh up. So above this Merge Meshes Mesh Op, I'm actually going to uh, add another item. Let's add a subdivide. So I'll click Add Operator. And I'll just type in Subdivide. Double click that. And in the properties for this procedural subdivide, I can change the subdivision method from Catmull Clark to Faceted. And I actually want to subdivide this one more time, so I'm just going to add another subdivide. So I click Add Operator. And then in the text field, I'll type in Subdivide. And again, I want this to be faceted. And then above the subdivide, I'm going to add a polygon bevel. So I'm just going to type in bevel, and I'll double click polygon bevel. And I guess I can just shift this out. You can either use uh, the arrow, the handle, or you can uh, do it numerically here. Um, but I'm going to uh, disable group polygons. And then I'll just also, in addition to changing the shift, I'll decrease the uh, or increase the inset a little bit. And then also I want to add some segments, like so. Now, what I'm doing here is just random. I'm just trying to get a bunch of um, mesh operations inside our procedural stack so that I can show you how to save this out as, a, uh, as an assembly, uh, an assembly preset. So we'll add a couple more. Above this polygon bevel, I'll just add a quick uh, smooth mesh op, and I'll change the iterations from 1 to, let's do 55. And then above that, I'll add a uh, set uh, polygon type. 
and that just allows us to kind of cycle between faces, subdivision surfaces, or Catmull Clark, and I'll just change that to Catmull Clark. And let's say this is something that uh, we actually want to use over and over again as uh, an assembly preset. So this is something that we might want to use on multiple geometry, not just uh, this cube that we started with. Um, so I'm just going to uh, select all of these and drag it into the schematic. And then I'll just quickly reorganize it. So we have uh, the subdivide above the merge meshes. The set polygon type goes on top of that. So even though um, in the schematic, it's not as important like the order, um, the way the nodes are displayed, um, it's always nice to keep it a little bit more uh, organized. So I, I try to mimic uh, the look of my procedural stack. Um, the procedural stack, like many things in Modo, um, has an order of operations where whatever happens on the bottom happens first, and then it, it, in ascending order it happens uh, sequentially. So the merge meshes happens first, and then subdivide happens, and then another subdivide happens, and then a polygon bevel happens, and then the smooth happens, and then the set polygon type happens. Um, so I try to mimic that here in the uh, schematic. It's not totally necessary, but it's just for organizational purposes. Um, and the deformation stack happens like this. Uh, the shader tree uh, has the same kind of behavior. Uh, everything is bottom to top. Okay, so the, the problem is that if I were to now um, select these uh, nodes and right click and choose create assembly, it would actually, uh, it would save an assembly, but when I brought it in, all of these procedural items would be uh, disorganized, and that would be a real pain uh, to reorganize every time I brought it in. Um, it would actually defeat the purpose of even creating uh, an assembly, in my opinion. So what we have to do is we have to um, select all of the mesh ops and then click on this little arrow here next to add operator and we have to click deform folder. And then I'll just drag this deform folder into uh, the schematic and this deform folder guarantees that everything will be uh, kind of in the correct uh, order when we actually go to uh, save this and reopen it. So I'm just going to detach the cube and then I'm going to right click and drag a lasso around all of these nodes. And then I'll right click on one of the nodes and click create assembly. And I'll just call this uh, ed underscore assembly. The name for my purposes right now doesn't really matter because I'll honestly never use this assembly again. I'm just trying to show how it's made. I'll click okay. And then I will uh, go up, click this arrow right here to go up uh, a level to our overview. And here's my ed assembly. I'll just drag that into our workspace. I'll double click the workspace. So now we're back to where we were in the schematic. And now if I double click in this uh, add assembly, we can see exactly what we had originally. Uh, these are the nodes that we had. Here's our assembly demo, which is a procedural item. And then we have these uh, nodes in the middle, uh, which are our uh, mesh operations. And then here's the deform folder. So what I want to do is I want to actually expose uh, the sources right here, the sources uh, to the assembly inputs, this plus symbol right here. What that does is it actually, oops, let me actually go back to my workspace. It allows us to take any geometry or any mesh item and drag it into our assembly. Right now there's no place for this um, cube mesh item to actually fit into our uh, current assembly. So I'm going to go into the assembly by double clicking and I'm going to actually uh, select this diamond right here and drag it into the plus symbol. So once I do that, that becomes uh, in, uh, an input. So if I go up one level, now you can see our assembly has this diamond here for sources. So now I can actually drag the cube into the source, like so. So let me actually have a look here. And it actually did uh, change the order. My merge meshes is actually happening up top. So I think we're going to have to reorganize this one time and hopefully when we save it, um, if it works the way it's supposed to, uh, we won't have to do that again. So this is all reversed. So I'm just going to drag the merge meshes uh, beneath the set polygon type. I'll drag the set polygon type to the top. I have my subdivide, subdivide, polygon bevel, smooth, set polygon. Okay, so now we are in the correct order. So what's nice now is that if I were to create, uh, if I were to detach this cube from our sources, we don't have anything. But if I create something like uh, another cube, and let me just move this over a little bit and just bevel this out. 
Let's shift that out and I'll just uh, shift this part out as well. Maybe not so far. Maybe I'll just move this back a little bit. Okay, so now I'll make this this other cube hidden, but if I drag it into the, whoops, if I drag it into the schematic like so, and drag this in as a source, you can see it's getting the same uh, kind of results that we got with our original cube. So I'll drag that in as well. So you can see what's happening here. We can actually apply uh, this stack of mesh operations to any geometry uh, just by pulling it into the sources here of this assembly and then everything within this assembly uh, gets fired off. So let me detach these and let's save this assembly. So I'll right click and choose save assembly preset. I'll click OK and then that opens up our assemblies folder. I have a, a folder here called Ed's assemblies and I'll just name this uh, demo assembly. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just give it an underscore 001. Click Save. So now if I uh, just create a new scene by closing the scene, so we have a completely fresh scene, uh, I can hold control and click on the cube icon, drag this cube into the schematic, press F6 to bring up my preset browser, and then I have to come over to where my assemblies are. So I'll just click assemblies. If you don't see the folders in your right hand side of your preset browser, come over to this gear and make sure folders as thumbnails is set to always. If it's set to only when the directory browser is hidden, you won't see anything. So I always set that to always. And then I'm going to look for, uh, let's see, assemblies and add assemblies. And here's the demo assembly we just created. So I'll double click that. And now if I connect uh, this uh, cube to the sources, it works as we expected. So I can, I always have this and we can always uh, use this. So this might not look great, but if I choose a, a torus, a torus definitely won't look good, but if I choose a cylinder, oops. Now let me just uh, hold shift and create a unit cylinder. So that comes in a new mesh item. And then I'll just move this out here, drag this cylinder into the schematic, and then I'll plug the cylinder as a source. You can see, oops, you can see the result we're getting. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, but that's because the cylinder is much more dense. But that's how you create uh, an assembly that you can reuse uh, over and over again. Let's actually uh, delete the caps for this uh, cylinder, and let's actually delete some of these uh, edge loops to make this a little bit less. Uh, dense. So this might work a little bit better now. So now the cylinder, if I drag it in here, that's still pretty dense. Let's have a look at what's happening here. Well, I know it's working on the cube. So maybe the cylinder is just not a great example. Let me reduce this a little bit more. Yeah, the mesh operations that I chose are uh, just causing uh, the cylinder to just not be a great example. Now I could enter the deformation uh, folder and disable one of the subdivisions so it's a little bit more normal. And that might be a result that you would be looking for, I guess. Uh, but that's not really the point. It was just really uh, an example to show you how to uh, properly save out an assembly preset. The biggest takeaway is the deform folder. Without this, uh, when you bring in the, uh, the assembly preset from the preset browser, uh, if you don't have that deform folder, uh, the uh, mesh operations will be all out of order. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, stay tuned for more videos uh, about Modo.